whoever started the independent women movement, like, take it back. Or take me off the list. Because that whole I don't need a man thing is so confusing. Because it's like, what do you need then? A bunch of women? Women need men. Men need women. I do not want to be an independent woman. Like, I do not want... God, I am not an independent woman. Please do not make me an independent woman. Pack me up! So over there, my modern-day Colleen, you got your uh, liberation, no take-backs. Nah, sister, you got your own bills to pay, and on top of that, you may just meet a man who needs you to pay up half that dinner bill. You can't be no scrub in today's dating market. Those kings out there aren't going to settle for uh, less than what they deserve. By default, you are on the list of strong and independent. You better get out there and uh, start earning your uh, keep, or you are going to fall behind. To all those kings out there, seeing uh, this Colleen's video, you deserve better. Don't let a wannabe dusty in your life. You are worth more. Damn, skip me. Moving on. I've been on seven dates in the past 10 days, so I thought it'd be funny to do a 2024 dating wrapped edition because I give up. All right, let's go. 2024 dating wrapped, San Francisco edition. Yes, I know it's January 17th. I've clearly been working overtime. So here's the agenda. We'll go through where we met, their occupation, rejection versus second date, how many kisses have I had? Am I still single after this madness? And my main takeaways. Where we met, I met one guy in person, three on Hinge, and three on Bumble. Occupation. Three were in finance, one was a CEO, one was in healthcare, one is a PM, and one was a pilot. Second dates versus rejection. Actually, both these guys that I went on a second date, went, I went on another date, so three dates with these two guys. One rejected me after the first, oh, we didn't even make it to the first date, but one rejected me regardless. And I rejected four after the first date. How many kisses? I've had two kisses on the first date and one on the second date. And after the first kiss, one I rejected. Whoa, wait up a second there. Did this queen start this video off by saying she has been on seven dates in 10 days? Um, him, 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 her, him, him, bodies, 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 bodies. Yeah, anything with uh, that much of a rapid body count racking has gone to be funny, among other things. Note she didn't put in her numbers of uh, the obvious on how many led to the sack. And if any of you think uh, a young uh, semi-attractive woman, or just a plain Jane, who is actively dating this much didn't uh, hit the sheets with any of uh, those dates, then I am sure you still believe in the tooth fairy. Sure, she just had kisses. I love the uh, woman's code words used here, especially when uh, she rejected a guy after his, um, kiss. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Ladies, I know some of you are going to uh, default to defend her at this point due to the sisterhood pinky swear rationale, but my womanese translator is above average, so yeah, nudge nudge wink wink. Kind of like when you uh, would ask, what do you do for work? As in code for, uh, let me figure out how much uh, he makes annually and if I am good with that type of lifestyle. Hey, I'm not knocking it, I'm just recognizing it for what it is. Key learnings, cried once, any variation of Mike, Michael, Mikey, run for the hills, just freaking run. They're literally a blaring red flag. Dates are exhausting. And I am still single after seven dates in 10 days. But here's what I will say. Okay, but here's what I learned. Guys love when women ask a ton of questions and they will more often than not ask you for a second date, even if you know that the chemistry is not there. Like all of them asked me for a second date and I was like, really? Really? After that after that date, you wanna go on a second date with me? I was shocked and obviously I said no. Um, here's the other thing I learned. Men are men in the SF area are really good at planning dates. Like every single date I've been on has been really fun. Like I've gotten to, gotten to go to like a new part, new restaurant here in SF, try out new foods. So that's my main takeaway. But I am on the hunt to find my boyfriend and I'm not gonna settle. Don't settle you guys, do not settle. Being named Mike is a red flag, but being on seven dates in 10 days is supposed to be some sort of prize catch? Did this woman stop at any point to map out a chart of the drastic spike in mileage increase? And ladies, don't fool yourselves into thinking just because she didn't get a relationship out of those seven dates, it doesn't uh, tick up the body count meter because it sure as hell does. I mean, well, women are notorious for uh, discarding body count with excuses like, uh, use protection, doesn't count. It was only five minutes, doesn't count. I was drunk. Doesn't count. Come on now, dawg. 
Come on, man. And the reason a lot of men ask for a second date is because they either didn't close on the first date or wanted to repeat. Her questions didn't mean much there. The main thing to take away here is she admitted she had a bunch of foodie dates. Gentlemen, I have said this before. First dates should be coffee dates. Note she only had a few second dates. Don't be the beta and chump paying full price for something another man got for free. Not just do all of you get played, you encourage women like this to continue this behavior. If she has three star looks, why in the hell are you giving her five star treatment? Hey buddy, let me clue you in. Moving on. This video is gonna be for people who choose to date ex-incarcerated human beings, men, women, I don't care who you date. Um, but y'all need to know why they were incarcerated to begin with. Because some of y'all be out here finding out a couple years later that you're dating or have been with. Now there's no reason to ever group anybody. There are also schmurders. Now, I'm not fully against schmurder, but you have to have a good reason why you schmurdered somebody. Now, we need we need to know why, right? Um, y'all do some background checks. Like, trust but verify. Because sometimes these mofos be lying about why they went places. And you need to know. Because God forbid, I don't wanna have to post up an RIP for one of y'all because y'all around with the wrong one. I don't want to be the jerk that points out her voice is the stereotypical tone you would get from a woman who dates those bad boys with criminal records. But when she comes out and says she isn't against uh, schmurd slash er, but you need a good reason, it's hard to argue against the uh, evident lack of uh, brain cells currently present. This is an example of the type of Kaween who will have a kid with a man serving five to 10, go around saying uh, they are looking for a good man to raise the offspring of a uh, tiny Big Steve or Bubba who is currently in an orange jumpsuit, then cheat on said good man in a conjugal visit, and then claim she has no idea how she contracted HCV. Listen, Kings, I don't really care how long of a dry spell you're on or whatever type of freaky stuff she said she is going to throw down in between the sheets. If she has a baby daddy behind bars and she is more tatted up than Danny Trejo, don't walk, run in the opposite direction. This isn't what I would call damaged goods. On the contrary, this is a highly functional Venus flytrap and you are the next uh, bug that's about to become the next meal. Maybe we better take off. Yeah, right. I'm just saying. So check check trust but verify always verify and also if you are dating somebody that has children but has no access to those children again check why don't just believe what comes out of their mouth because they might be up to some and they're not good baby daddies. Why would you like to have somebody else's shit baby daddy for your baby daddy or your future baby daddy? You don't. So, check, trust, but verify. Verify. There ain't nothing wrong with that. In 2024, there is nothing wrong with that. You don't know what motherfuckers would be up to nowadays. So, that's my PSA for today. Y'all be safe out in these streets. I'm worried about y'all. Okay, worried about y'all. She literally, in the same video, was more concerned about a man who has no access to his kids than a man who got a prison sentence for fragging someone else. Make it make sense, please. I don't want to sound genderous, but this complete lack of logic in relationship decision making is coming mostly from one side of the aisle. Fam, after hearing this, my brain feels like a SWAT team just raided it and arrested all forms of common sense. Ladies, this is a prime example of when men say women use the dumbest of emotions to make critical relationship decisions. Decisions. And the worst part is when crap like this blows up in a woman's face, they act all surprised like if these decisions couldn't possibly end up as a huge mistake. Okay, let me come at this from a different angle. Ladies, the reason 99% of men say the things they say when you decide to start dating an ex-con with a uh, violent criminal record is that if that man decides to do a round two of his rampage, you do not have the ability to stop him without a firearm, which means other good men will have to be called in to save you from your awesome choice. I.e., good men are placed in harm's way because of you.
Moving on. So I've seen her in the past, but somehow I've landed on Pearl TikTok. I'm not going to put up a photo of her because I simply refuse. But Pearl is, I'm guessing, a 20s, hedging on 30s-ish, redheaded woman who is the biggest cheerleader you've ever seen for what incels want women to be. She believes that all women, when they give birth, should have to go through a DNA test for their baby so no man gets trapped into raising a kid who isn't his. Just making the assumption that, like, all women are schmutty and therefore, you know, an incel dad shouldn't have to, like, grow feelings towards his offspring until he's absolutely sure they're his. She believes that women should all be virgins when they marry, although she did get called out on a podcast because she's had relations. So besides the fact that she's not 16, so no longer their preferred demographic, and she's had partners, she's cheering for a lifestyle that absolutely wouldn't accept her. But her ultimate belief is we women should move back to the 1400s. She's going to sink, Captain. But she can't sink. She's unsinkable. Oh my, women are trying to bash other women who call out some abhorrent behavior. Let me make it clear, this audit is not about Pearl. This is going to be based on this XX XL Kaween's argument. Now, her first gripe is about incel cheerleading. Yeah, I'm sure what bothers her the most is it takes away from cheerleaders from the uh, body positivity movement. Next, her contention of mandatory DNA tests are not warranted. Well, I beg to differ. I will quote an article from fraud.com, a link in the description. A 2022 study published in Human Reproduction revealed that in the U.S. out of 1,211 men seeking paternity testing, 11% were not the biological fathers. Another similar study in 2023 featured in Family Relations found 12% were not the biological fathers. And in the UK DNA clinics, 5,000 men between 2014 and 2016 had parental tests and found a whopping 48% of the UK men were not the biological father. That's your wife and my kids. And as for uh, being untouched on your wedding night, yeah, that sounds so horrible. Imagine being as pure as uh, your great-grandmother was when she uh, married your great-grandfather. Sheesh. Men are our masters. We deserve beatings. We should control nothing. We should be, like, absolutely silent. Just chain ourselves to the kitchen sink and put on a chastity belt so a man can leave the house without worrying that we can't control ourselves. Basically, sit still, look pretty, and absolutely be everything they want us to be. And while she's super busy cheerleading for the incels, they're now starting to post videos about how she's too lippy. Not a virgin. A little bit masculine. Okay, a lot of bit masculine. Like, they prefer women who are poly pocket sized so they can just throw them against the wall whenever they misbehave. Pearl's almost their height. They feel intimidated by that. Sorry, not intimidated. They just don't prefer that kind of a woman. Can you imagine cheerleading so hard for a group of men with pick-me energy of, like, nuclear level, and then the team that you're cheering for starting to post videos being like, she's too old. What is she, like, over 21? Mm -mm. I don't like how she gets on TV and podcasts and has opinions. She's lippy. She doesn't look like she would just... She's not a virgin. She's not this tall. Yuck. We should deserve beatings. The funny thing is, no one absolutely said that. That is some extreme BS that only extremely indoctrinated womanists claim is part of being a traditional woman. Note, since traditional women are usually happier than tons of fun in this video, she has to make up whatever she can to try to tarnish traditional relationships. And the comment of being absolutely what they want you to be applies far more with modern delusional women than men since they want to pick and choose when equality applies. Oh, I'm going to assume this woman loves to throw around uh, the word intimidated. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I'm pretty sure she will say men are intimidated by women in her weight class. Oh, sorry, not intimidated. Just not preferred that kind of, uh, woman. <laughs> And her following rant on Pearl, honestly, the uh, jealousy with this woman is basically dripping out of every word she spouts. I mean, the moment she said, pick me energy, you already know that uh, those girls who have that energy are the ones who get more attention. I mean, uh, the queen in this video has Dunkin' Donuts energy with Krispy Kreme energy rolled up into a one uh, supersized container. <laughs> And yet she still goes out and cheers for them, promotes this lifestyle wholeheartedly. And you wonder why you have a problem finding a guy? 
Pearl is their perfect woman. If she had been born a foot shorter and started this five years early, she would be their queen. Well, okay, they would never let a woman have any kind of power, but, you know, kind of the idea of. Like, she's their perfection. Almost. And they still find flaw with her. And other women can't quite understand, like, oh, well, you know, I do everything. Why doesn't he love me? Because even when they're given perfection to make themselves feel better, they still try to knock the woman down. I truly hope Pearl wakes up one day and sees what they're doing to her. Because if we could get her on our side, ooh, imagine if she could use that power for good. They're literally calling her ugly, old, unbreedable, undesirable, and she keeps doubling down with more content for them like that's gonna get her somewhere. Ex-tradwives here on TikTok, maybe you guys could like show up to one of her talks one day and just like stage an intervention. Like, hey, you're somewhere in your 30s, you're basically our age. See where we are now. Learn from us. Save yourself the next 10 years. The womanist sludge just keeps seeping out of her pie hole, along with uh, the crumbs of her second lunch. Men would never let a woman have any power? Gee, tell that to all the uh, actual royal bloodline queens and princesses, to say the least, throughout history. I take it this woman's only good version of men are those who uh, suffer from soy rage at the mention of anything not feminine based. <laughs> And the invite she is giving Pearl? I mean, who can resist ending up like this Kaween? The way this portly Kaween talks, you would think she has to beat men back with a stick. Well, maybe not beat them back. Just uh, swat them to the side on our way to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Is it just me, or does anyone else ever notice the blatant hypocrisy of some of these women who demand men to hold other men accountable, but the moment a woman holds other women accountable, they quickly want to attack her for not participating in the hive mind of women always good, men and always bad. I would say this woman is overcompensating for something, but considering her size, compensating twice as much is about par for the course here. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you enjoy this audit, click on the video in the end screen for more content. If you would like to support the channel, please follow the link in the description to donate to our beer fund, or like, subscribe, and share this video on other social media platforms. If you agree or disagree with anything about this audit, please let us know in the comments. I'm going to leave this audit right here. I'll see all of you in the next episode.